All right, all right. King's Life of Credit, we back again. Um, gonna just touch bases on a few things that, you know, I've been getting a lot of DMs about, um, especially when it comes to how do they know if the credit letter is a correct credit letter or a couple of, hold on, wait a minute. So a couple of the DMs asked me, Okay, they said, how do I know if the credit letter will work? So uh, let's talk about the credit letters. So when it comes to like collections and different things like that, well, how my credit, my credit letters are, are um, structured, it's structured based on the type of account. So with a collection account, we wanna go after the third party collector not the original creditor, because the original creditor is not the one that's uh, reporting it to the credit bureau, it's the collection agency they sold it to. So, with that being said, uh, the credit letter is basically uh, just saying that you're not held liable for any third party uh, in the companies that's seeking payment for the original creditor. So you're not liable to pay them. You don't have to pay them. So they can come up your, your your credit because you never got an account with them. You never got services with them. And you never applied for anything to even get that account. So how do you even owe this company anything? You don't. So by you don't own them, the collection is so easy to get off because uh, they third party. Let's see. What about repossessions? So let's talk a little bit about repossessions. Um, repossessions is basically, it could be an involuntary repossession, meaning that you just gave the car back and you didn't want it anymore. Or repossession, meaning that they came, cut through your gang, wait, come here, and snatch your car. Most of the time, we don't even be wanting that to happen. But a lot of the times it happens. You know, shit happens in life. You know, so with repossessions, you know, they, I wouldn't per se, they easy to come off, but when you have a repossession, uh, involuntary repossession, they receive their item back. So you're not liable for the whole $50,000. Technically, they're supposed to sell the vehicle and whatever's remaining from that loan that they did not receive when they sold the car at auction, that's supposed to be on your credit. When it's not like that, you can't give the vehicle back that's worth 50,000, as they say, and you owe them 50,000, that's $100,000 you're trying to give them, no. So what we do is we go on there, we, we maximize and execute the very first credit letter. Why? Because they all, all them companies do that to steal from you. They do it to steal from you because a repossession is exactly what it is. The car got repo because you couldn't make the payment. Okay, cool, they don't know your financial situation. But then all of a sudden, they, they right back at you talking about some, hey, um, you still owe me 50,000 from that Lexus that I took from you, but we sold it already, but we still want money from you. Man, get out of here, hell no, we ain't getting shit. How about that? How about that? Hard inquiries. Hard inquiries are easy to come off if it's, if it's not attached to an account. And what I mean by that is that um, hard inquiries or inquiries, they are when you apply for a major credit card, auto loan, house loan, any type of lending, they will um, put an inquiry on your credit. So when an inquiry is there, say friends, you get denied, you can take that inquiry off. You don't gotta wait the two years, you can take it off. Um, if it have an account linked to it, you really don't want to touch it because the way they changed it up now, 
if you try to touch it, it'll take the account off with that inquiry. Because if you send this inquiry not yours, this account that the inquiry got, uh, you got that inquiry from this account. So therefore, none of it's yours. So they're gonna wipe it off. So I'll be telling people be cautious about the things that they dispute. Okay. Bankruptcy. Yeah, I can remove bankruptcy, but the thing with bankruptcy is that it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time. And the reason being is that they real they real stubborn when it comes to bankruptcies. You know, they real stubborn. You know, I never recommend people to do bankruptcy, but if you did it already, shit, then we got to take it off. We got to figure it out. But I never recommend bankruptcy. It's because companies look at you as looking for the government to help you like you get um, government aid checks and shit. You know, so don't, don't, if you can avoid it and if you're not doing it for business purposes, try to get your credit fixed and resolved before running to the government to wipe a debt off for you. Because a lot of lenders are gonna be skeptical to really wanna deal with you because they like, okay, what was their purpose in wanting to file a bankruptcy instead of getting their credit fixed or paying their debt down or paying their bills? So, nah, I trust them at 300, 200. Hey, who wanna deal with that? No, don't put a bankruptcy on that. It's not that serious. It's not that serious unless you a business or you 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 got you know millions of dollars in debt then that's different that's different because you're going to be paying me a lot of money to babysit you to do your credit trust me on that one um matthew matthew okay Matthew want to know why did I structure a 1500 2500 uh, payment package for credit? Okay, let me break it down to you. How I used to do the credit is that I would charge you the percentage of your debt to remove it. Get it? The percentage of your debt to remove it. So if I'm charging you 5% of each debt that you owe, that's too much money. You know, I had a lot of people complain about that, but they were satisfied at the end. So I thought to myself, like, okay, let me come up with a different structure, a different plan for you guys to, you know, help you minimize the payments that you have to pay to take this debt off. Because I always say, if you had 40000 50000 in debt, you complain about $1,500 for me to forgive your debt for you, take it off your credit so you can do other things to get to the next level, just pay your forty dollars to $50,000 debt, pay it off, so that way it can be a paid off whatever, collection, charge off, however it looks on your credit, let it sit there, and once it's done sitting there or they done with it and they wanna sell it, then you can start trying to figure out other things. But you can't complain with me for the debt that you gave yourself. You gotta remember that. I didn't give you the debt, you gave yourself the debt. So just think about that. I didn't give you that debt. I'm doing a service for you, a service for you. So if I'm doing a service for you, don't you think my time is valuable? I think so. I think so. Alex. Alex said, uh, Alex made a good point. Alex said that if I have four collections on my credit, do I have to buy four credit letters for that? Okay. So each creditor or each collection is separate accounts, separate, separate, separate creditors. And it has different amounts and it's going to different, you know, uh, companies, right? So if you have a AT&T collection, medical, medical collection, you have uh, 
let's see uh what other type of collection a uh, uh cable bill collection those three different companies so they can't all be the same they have to be different so yes it will be different credit letters that means that you have to purchase four different credit letters yes you have to purchase four different credit letters he actually he actually made a good point right there child support Child support, uh, I have done child support in the past. Uh, not a lot of people on child support, that's great. You know, a lot, of, a lot of guys out here actually making the best decision on who they have a baby by. Because it looked like a lot of people was having issues with child support when I first started. Uh, back in 2018, I had really started with other people credit in 2018. So it's like, Child support literally takes me about, I say, three to four months, three to four months. Uh, same way with bankruptcy, three to four months because it's a judgment. It's a judgment. And I, I used to charge flat fee 500 each child support, 500 each uh, bankruptcy. And that's because at the time it was, you know, challenging challenging to uh you know figure out bankruptcy and figure out how to manipulate the system to try to get you guys to get that shit off your credit you know so doing that really helped me understand a lot about the fair credit reporting act and the difference between judgments and just regular accounts so getting those judgments off is is pretty a smooth slaving for me right now To this question. Okay. Do I do payment plans? Some instances, it depends on the person on how I feel about you. I will do a payment plan. Um, I've done payment plans in the past where that I got uh, hijacked. I got hijacked. You know, don't want to pay the remaining, but I fixed your credit. So it's like it can go both ways. You can pay me and I don't fix your credit, or I can fix your credit and you don't pay me. The difference between those two is that I'm going to fix your credit and I'm going to work on your credit. And I'm building something here. I'm building a reputation. I'm building myself up to become a great credit person. So by me becoming a, a great credit person, it's really motivating me to want my clients to be in a situation where that they feel comfortable with giving me the information. I never had too many people not comfortable with giving me the information to do their credit. So payment plans, if I'm comfortable with you, I'll tell you to do half, half now, half when I'm done. Uh, don't like doing it, but I would do it. I would. Um, some instincts, I will do half up front and I'll do half of your credit. And when you pay me the other half, I'll do the other half of your credit. Just fairness. It's just fairness. You know, but a lot of people come from word of mouth so I can trust them a little bit better than I can does anybody just coming, you know? So I just want to say this, is that you, you trust and believe in yourself and you have to make sure that you make the right decisions. You know, even if it's saying no, or even if it's saying yes, you have to make the right decisions. You gotta, you know, be mindful of the things that you think about and you say, because when it comes to your personal information, you have to remember, you're trying to get your credit fixed. You're not looking for a loan or a lending from me. So your credit is not in the best of care when you're giving me your information. So it's nothing that I can honestly do with your credit that you ain't already tried to do. 
So if you can't get a snicker, that's always, always my point. If you can't get a snicker, what makes you think I'm going to get a pack of M&M's? Come on now. It ain't going to work that way. It ain't going to work that way at all. So y'all just remember, you know, just look over y'all credit, monitor it every day. I just had a client today that I just noticed they had a collection on their on credit, and I just fixed their credit. You know, so it, it, it will be things coming. It will be things coming because you you negligent. You being real negligent with your information. Shit, it happens. Stop being so negligent. You know, don't call me, hey, why my credit score go down? I don't know, nigga. Look at it. Like, how am I supposed to know what your credit score doing? You supposed to be monitoring. Not me. I'm not your babysitter. I'm not your credit monitoring babysitter. No. No. Figure that out yourself, you know? Figure it out yourself. I'm not saying I'm going to leave you hanging, but shit. Don't call me like I'm supposed to know what you're doing. You gave your, your, you doing something. You gave me your information to clean it, and that's what I did. I don't care about nothing else at all. So, it's a lot of scammers out here. They all, they everywhere. Shit. You, you can't duck them. Only thing you can do is just try and hope for the best when you do it. That's the only thing you can really do. But the good thing about it is, and the point that I'm trying to make is that make sure you do your homework behind everybody you deal with. Everybody. Even me. Do your homework. Do your homework. After you do your homework about me, it might convince you to go ahead and figure out how to get all my money when you come get your credit fixed. King's Life of Credit.